A little expert knowledge of the rectangular marquee tool makes it easy to create tabbed journaling. Because this tutorial is about journaling and journaling is one of the last things that you do on a scrapbook page, you'll want to start with a nearly completed page. I'll start with this template from Anita Designs. And here's what my page looks like when it's ready for journaling. If you don't want to start with a nearly completed page, you can just start with a new blank document. Step-by-step -step instructions for doing that and everything else that I mention in this video can be found in the manual. The first step is to journal in a text box. So you'll need to decide where to place it on your page. In my case, I'm going to place my text box in the same place that the text is on the template. First, press the letter D to reset the color chips to the default of black over white. And then in the layers panel, click on the top most layer to activate it. In my case, I already have a text layer here. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that layer because I'm not wanting to use that same type. Get the horizontal type tool. And in the tool options, open the font picker and choose a clean journaling font. I think this tutorial works especially well with a typewriter font. So I'll use American Typewriter Regular. Journaling fonts typically have a size between 12 to 15 points. I'm going to set the size of my journaling to 12 points and then press enter. I'll also set the letting to auto and the tracking should be set to zero. In Photoshop, the letting and the tracking can be found in the character panel. The color chip should already be black and then click on the center align icon or whichever alignment works best for the position for your journaling. The style should be set to none. There is no style in Photoshop. Now on the document, Hold down the shift key and click and drag to create a large text box. Let go of the shift key while dragging to release the proportion constraints. Holding down the shift key while clicking and dragging will keep your new text box from interfering with other type layers on your document. Now type in some journaling for your scrapbook page. I already have some copied from another document. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in right here. If you need to move your text box around, click and drag on the handles of the bounding box. I'm going to drag mine down just a little bit so I can more clearly see the journaling there. If you're out of room, you'll need to click and drag down on the bottom bounding box handle. Click the check mark to commit the change. And then at this point, I'd recommend spell checking your journaling and looking it over for missing or extra words. Reading the typed paragraph slowly and out loud will usually help spot errors. Once you're satisfied that your journaling is ready, then you can proceed. It will be much easier to change things now than after you've created the tabs. Next, we'll add some extra spaces between the words in the journaling. The first thing that I'm going to do is to zoom in here several times by pressing Control plus, that's Command plus on a Mac, to reposition the zoom, hold down the space bar, and click and drag on the document. In the Layers panel, double click on the thumbnail of the type layer to highlight all the journaling. Then press the left arrow key to place the cursor at the beginning of the paragraph. Press the right arrow key until your cursor is at the end of the first word. And then press the space bar twice to add two additional spaces between those two words. Then continue using the right arrow key to place the cursor and add additional spaces between each of the words. In my journaling, I am planning on keeping the entire date on one tab, so I didn't add extra spaces between those letters. So I'm going to keep going along here and adding two extra spaces between each word of my journaling. You'll want to do that too. 
As you go along, I'd also recommend adding two extra spaces to the words that are at the end of your lines of type. That way, when we adjust the text box later, it will all line up nicely. So now that the text box is spaced out correctly, we'll want to finalize the width and the position. Again, you'll do that by clicking and dragging on the side handles of the bounding box. So something like this. I want all of my type to fit on five full lines. So I kind of squish them together. I don't really need this extra part down here, but I want to save it because next we're going to add additional space between the lines of the type. Click the check mark to commit the change. Then get the horizontal type tool and in the tool options, lessen the value of the letting until the lines of type are touching. I already know that for me, that would be seven points. You want the lines to touch, but to not overlap. In Adobe Photoshop, the letting can be found in the character panel. Once you find your perfect letting number, where the lines touch, but do not cross, multiply that letting number by three. So in my case, I have seven points right now. Multiplied by three would make that 21. So I'm going to enter 21 points in the letting. Now things are properly spaced within the lines and between the lines. The next step is to add long tabs behind each line of journaling. To do that, Begin by going into the Layers panel and holding down the Control key in Windows or the Command key on a Mac, click on the Create a New Layer icon. This will create a new blank layer directly below the journaling layer. Double click directly on the name of this new layer, rename it Tabs, and press Enter or Return to commit the change. Then get the Rectangular Marquee tool. In the Tool Options, Click on the new selection icon, set the feather to zero and the aspect to normal. In Photoshop, you would set the style to normal. Now on the document, click and drag a long thin selection outline around the longest line of your type. So I'm going to click and drag an outline around this line right here. To reposition while dragging, press and hold the space bar. You want the selection outline to be a little bit longer on each end than the line of type, but you don't want it to be too thick from top to bottom. If it's too thick, then each line of the tabs are going to run together. So when it looks something like this, let go of the cursor, then press Control Backspace in Windows or Command Delete on a Mac to fill that selection with the background color chip of white. Now don't deselect just yet. Because we have the rectangular marquee tool still, we can click and drag that selection to a new location. So I'm going to click and drag it to the next longest line of my journaling. I'll place it right up here. Now on the left side, I'm going to make the selection be a little bit longer than the beginning of that line. But over here, it's a little bit too long. So we need to transform the selection. To do that, right click in Windows or control click on a Mac inside the selection outline and choose transform selection. So holding down the shift key to release the proportion constraints, click and drag inward on the side handle of the bounding box to shorten the selection. Then click the check mark to commit the change. To fill the selection with white, press Control Backspace in Windows or Command Delete on a Mac. And again, don't deselect just yet. Instead, because we still have the marquee tool, we can click and drag that selection outline to the next longest line of type. I'll place it right here. And I don't think I really need to transform the selection because it looks good on both ends. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with white using the same method of Control Backspace or Command Delete on a Mac. And then here's how my lines look 
after adding the rest of them. Now you can deselect at this point, but you don't need to. Instead, you can continue on. We're going to remove some little drips here between each word. To do that, I'm going to zoom in to this area between the first two words of my paragraph. So up here on this first line of type, click and drag a selection outline that's about the width of one space on a keyboard. You don't want it to be too wide that it removes too much, but you also don't want it to be so thin that when you go to add a drop shadow to your tabs later, that the drop shadow overpowers that space. So I'm going to make my uh, selection outline about that size. If you need to reposition, again, hold down the space bar and click and drag. Also, notice that my selection outline is just a little bit wider than the width of the tab. I don't want the selection to be touching any of the other tabs on the page. When you have your selection outline the size that you want, Press the backspace key in Windows or the delete key on a Mac to remove that part between the two words. Now again, don't deselect just yet because we have the marquee tool still. We can click and drag that selection to a new space. I'll put it between these two words. Again, I'll press the backspace key in Windows or the delete key on a Mac to remove that area. And then I'll continue moving the selection and pressing the backspace or delete key. You'll want to continue on doing that to the space between all the words of your journaling. To make it easier on yourself, I would recommend staying zoomed in for this part. And if you do make a mistake, you can always press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to step back until you get to a place that you like and then continue on. I should also mention that your tabs do not have to be perfect. You don't have to get that little tiny selection exactly between the words. It's totally okay. It's kind of meant to not look perfect. So at this point, you'll want to deselect and then you can clip a paper to the tabs layer. If you do that, you'll need to merge the paper with the tabs layer. And then you'll also want to add a drop shadow to the tabs. I've included basic instructions in the manual to get you to this point. Then you're going to want to merge down that type layer to the tabs layer so that we can continue editing the tabs. So in the layers panel, click on the journaling layer, which is the type layer to activate it. Then in the menu bar, choose layer merge down. Now those tabs are one. You can no longer edit the journaling, but we can change the position of those little tiny tabs. Let me show you how. In the layers panel, that tabs layer needs to be active. Once again, get the rectangular marquee tool with the same settings as before. And then on the document, click and drag a selection outline around either one of the tabs or a group of tabs or maybe even an entire line of tabs. Like let's say that I want to separate this entire line a little bit different than the other ones here in the journaling box. So with that area selected, press Control T, Command T on a Mac to get the transform options. And then just use your keyboard arrow keys. I'll press the down arrow to move it around, maybe a little bit over to the side. If you want to change the angle, maybe just one or two or three degrees, hover your cursor over a corner handle of the bounding box until you see that curved double headed arrow and then click and drag. I would definitely not recommend doing this more than just a couple degrees. It needs to be very subtle. Click the check mark to commit the change. Again, make sure that you have the rectangular marquee tool. Click and drag a selection around one or two or an entire line. 
Now keep in mind that any of the pixels that are inside that selection are going to move when you transform them. So I'm going to press Control T, Command T on a Mac to get the transform options. And this one, I'm just going to move it over this way a little bit and maybe again, tilt it a little bit. Click the check mark to commit the change. And then here is what my final paragraph looks like after I have transformed several of the words, phrases, and lines. I like that it gives it just a little bit of character. Okay, so I'm going to zoom all the way out here. And the last thing you'll want to do is we need to move this tabs layer. Right now it's at the very top of the layers panel. Typically, you would want a journaling layer to be below any shadowed layers. Now, this journaling layer is actually shadowed, so I'm just going to put it at the bottom of any shadowed layers. Okay, now I can get the Move tool, and I'm going to nudge that just a little bit under my title, and I love the way it turned out. Here is my finished scrapbook page featuring the Easy Tabbed Journaling Tutorial. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. This has been Jen White with Digital Scrapper. We help you get your stories told.